30 student hours for the video capture and editing, two student hours for web-related projects, and 53 student hours for management and uh, checkup and those kinds of things uh, with our student assistants who, who are checking them out throughout the semester. I will say that we probably underestimated the production time. I would say conservatively that we probably spent 60 student hours on production, probably more, and probably more like I would say eight to ten hours for web-related tasks, but the project kind of evolved as we went along. We thought of more things that we could and should do, and so I think that's the nature of any project like this, but um, we still feel like uh, the grant was a really wonderful thing to get this started and get us uh, get us moving on. So we're, we feel very fortunate that we were able to get that grant. Uh, we developed some project outcomes which were submitted with our grant proposal also really tried to consider as we actually went forth with the project. Specifically, the things we wanted to accomplish with this tour were an awareness of library space for the users, um, awareness of services and resources. We wanted students to utilize both the physical and the virtual environment of the library, and that both of these things, uh, as they became com comfortable with them, would prepare them for academic success. So specifically, I just wanted to share with you some of our specific project objectives. So we wanted students to be able to la uh, navigate the library website. Our, le our website is rather complex, and it, it has a lot of information not only about our services, but it's actually the doorway into our online resources. And so we felt like it was really important for our students to feel comfortable with our webpage. Also, um, the University of California has launched a pilot a catalog for the combined campuses of all 10 UCs, and um, this tool is called Next Generation Melville, and we wanted to promote this tool and also help students become familiar and comfortable with using it to search for books, ebooks, and articles. We wanted students to be able to find the spaces in the library that they were going to use, as students here at UC Merced, um, and also avail themselves of different services within the library. This is one really specific little objective that came about because of our experiences with freshman students, and we really wanted freshmen to be able to read a call number that they found in the catalog and actually go to the shelf and navigate and find the book. And we found, find that a lot of our students have a hard transition from Dewey to LC classification and reading those call numbers. And in fact, some students have never actually had the experience of taking a call number from a catalog and going to the shelf to find the book. Uh, we also, because of our online environment, there are some things that we know can be obstacles for students to actually getting the resources that they need. One is being able to access things from off campus, and so um, we have the VPN client that we uh, use to support that, so we wanted students to be aware of that and, and have an idea of how to use it. UC eLinks is really important to, uh, when you use library resources, it, it allows students to get to full text in a rather complex online environment, and also we wanted them to understand how to use um, IELTS interlibrary loan because that's such an integral part of the UC or said library way of doing things as a new campus. Uh, we developed first a script, and that was a collaborative effort um, between Sarah Teal and I, and, and Donald had a, a hand in that as well. The script included not only the content for what we wanted the students to learn, but we had to consider actually the navigation of having them move through the library. And it, it's easier than it sounds. So uh, it took several trials of actually writing the script and then walking the library to make sure that we were doing it in a way that made sense to the student and that we could actually direct them on the iPod. So we moved from developing the script to actually developing a storyboard. And the image that you see displayed is just um, one page of the storyboard that we developed. It included not only the script that we were going to use for the audio portion of the tour, but it included the scene shots and uh, scene transitions. And really, um, we, we absolutely relied on this when it came time to edit and put the video together and also to add the audio. because. As you know, you always make changes as you go along, and um, the timing was influenced somewhat by, um, well, at least we, we refer to the storyboard a lot in terms of trying to make the timing of the transitions work. So there was a lot of upfront work that took place before we actually recorded the video. Uh, we used fairly 
low-tech tools to produce this video. Uh, these were tools that we already had in the library. We used a Sony Digital Handycam, a Canon PC PowerShot. We used Final Cut Pro, which is a step above what you get basically when you buy a Mac. It's, it's not, not the video um, editing software that comes with a Mac. So um, it's a very powerful tool and um, very effective, so we did use that version. We also used Snagit, which is a program that captures screenshots. Um, we sort of laugh about this, but um, we sort of had to make do with with what we had, but we wanted the, we wanted rolling shots, and it turns out that we actually did have a tool, but we just didn't know we had a tool when it was time to <laughs> shoot it. So um, we made do with uh, a rolling chair and a tripod in order to actually shoot the video. And this is JJ, our student assistant, who did the video uh, capture and most of the editing. One of the aspects of this uh, program or this project that was absolutely critical was the collaboration that we had with the Writing One instructors. And I just can't say enough about, um, I know Sarah did most of the collaborative work. She was the one who attended meetings and met with the instructors and corresponded with them to make sure that this got done. But we had, I think, really excellent collaboration with the Writing faculty. Most of it was done by email, but Sarah did attend one in-person meeting where the, where the entire group was present. And it was sort of a recruiting meeting, um, but a lot of them did get on board. And I think we probably have time. But um, we also created some tools to communicate with faculty. This might take a minute to open, but we created a web page that had all the information for faculty to refer to about how to sign up, um, what they needed to instruct their students on, what the tool would accomplish, what the objectives were. And we also created an online participation form so faculty could register their classes to participate. We felt like we might need to stagger the class participation um, because we really didn't know what the demand for iPods was going to be. It turns out that I don't think we ever had all 15 iPods checked out at once, and so that maybe was something in the future that we wouldn't have to consider. But initially, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have all the students showing up to and take we the did tour. occasionally see students come in little groups. Yeah. Was, you would see a pair of students, you'd see four people in front of your library offices all doing their yeah. classes. They had to come and stop right outside the library offices, so it was not unusual to walk out the door and see students there with their iPods, which I really enjoyed. So, um, Sarah also put on this page just a little snippet of the video itself, so I won't launch into that right now, since I think we have enough iPods for everybody to take a look at the actual tour, but this was uh, just a, a hook to try to get the, the faculty to buy into this. We also, there was an online participation form, which I won't take the time to show you, but uh, one of the other pieces that I think was really critical to uh, making this work was the fact that there was an assessment that faculty actually required their students to submit because if they didn't have that assignment you know I don't, I don't know exactly I think every faculty member handled um, how they were going to grade that individually some maybe get, did it as extra credit some did it as a certain number of points I'm not sure exactly how that all played out but there had to be some incentive for students to participate um, in the tour even though we think it's pretty cool and pretty fun and it didn't take very long it was only half an hour there still had to be something to motivate students to do it. So, uh, 